Greetings collectors, followers and friends. Tom Hughes here with some more thoughts on painting. Uh, it's been a while, that's the norm uh, these these days, isn't it? We're in Lee Woods, the woods, and we're gonna do some plein air painting. I've got my bike, um, I've got my backpack. Previously on trips, um, on the bike to paint, I was putting big panny bags on the bike and trying to get everything in there. But what I've discovered is things like the painting bots, they bounce around a lot and they're very noisy. And to be honest, it's just loads easier just to put everything in the backpack. So that's what we're doing. Um, there's a lot of bees. I can hear loads of bees in that tree. Uh, we're gonna ride down here and see if we can find a painting spot. Now it's very it's very bright today, lovely day. I'm trying to decide whether I want to paint in the shade, in the sun or a bit of both. Well this is quite interesting. Everything's quite spaced out, there's obviously gaps between the trees. There's a nice light. I may do something in here. Quite dark though. Hmm. The light coming through the top of these leaves and making them glow is rather lovely. I think we're going to keep moving. Oh, and the glow coming off those. Now, this is quite an interesting quite an interesting part of the trail actually. One thing about the woods I've discovered is there's almost an unlimited, well there is, unlimited amount of options compositionally. You've got extreme light contrasts, you've got these, I mean look at right, okay, perfect example. Look at this tree here. On its own, no branches, just a really interesting wiggly trunk. And then here, which I think is beach, is dead straight. Just the variety you get in these small areas is incredible. This one here, I was just next to, you see, I just walked straight past this. Look at this thing. Now, I'm the first to admit my knowledge of trees, species, is very, very limited. But I don't think that matters. I'll learn, learn as I go. I've always loved being in the woods and not knowing what the trees are called hasn't made much difference to my enjoyment. I've always loved this as well. The the shadows of leaves falling on tree trunks. Look at this old thing over here. This is like some sort of, this reminds me of where the, the hobbits stop on the road to Bree in the Fellowship of the Ring. When they jump off the path and the, uh, the what are they called? The ring race, black riders. The hand comes over and all the bugs and centipedes crawl out of the log when they're hiding. I mean, just that as a subject matter is fascinating. Loads and loads of detail and all the shapes are so abstract, you know, it's nice not to paint cars and windows. It's nice to just paint organic forms. Look at this mountain bike track. That's rather hairy. I have done that in my younger days. I've been exploring these woods for over 20 years now. And I still find every time I go out pretty much and 
that's probably two or three times a month through here at the moment, I still find new stuff. It's just a wonderful playground. Now, what should we do? What should we paint? This is quite interesting. Got leaves in the sun, lots of thin sticks, tendrils. I'm actually quite drawn back to that. Look, oh, Lord of the Rings thing. However, now if I if I choose to paint a light effect, I'm bound by that, and if the sun goes in, the painting may disappear. So. I think I'm more drawn today at least to shapes. There you go, look. The shadows of those leaves on the tree. I mean just this just just this small area could be a huge painting. It's so complex. That interests me quite a lot, the fact that scale, a big painting doesn't have to capture a huge um, field of view. A big painting could be one to one, really. And you could do a six foot high painting just of the first six feet of this trunk. Oh, what to do? Look at this thing here. Isn't that amazing? This big fat trunk and then coming out into all these spidery... <laughs> it goes up into there. But something tragic's happened here. Whoops. Okay, I need to have a serious thing. This is rather marvellous. Full of spider webs. Lee Woods is on the side of a natural gorge, so you can probably hear the road down on the portway, and it gets incredibly steep and very dangerous. That's nice. That's really nice. That's the other thing, you, I'll, you know, you'll be riding along and think, oh, not that much here. You turn around and the view back is completely different. All that dappled light. Should we give this a go? I think so. I think so. I've only got 10 by 8 boards. Let's give it a whirl. Now, aside from, <laughs> aside from the traffic noise, it's incredibly peaceful. It's one of the huge draws about coming to a place like this to paint is apart from the odd dog walker it's just really wonderfully quiet nobody here just how I like it Yeah, so I know you haven't heard from me in a while, but sometimes if you haven't got anything to say, sometimes it's best not to say anything.
I don't always want to make videos. I don't always want to chat about stuff. Sometimes I just want to think for long periods. If you've bought some of my painting videos before, my instructional videos, you may be watching in horror as I paint directly onto a whiteboard. <laughs> But I do it for a good reason. Um, I'm currently recording a special crowdfunder only instructional video about painting in the woods. But I may eventually put up a instructional video for the woods for sort of general purchase, general consumption. So what, what's the date? What is it today? It's the 18th of July. I don't really want to start off with negatives, but I really do struggle in winter. And yet again, spring took a long time to turn up, which I found difficult. And summer's been rather hit and miss too wouldn't you say the jet stream being diverted and us getting pelted with rain I've just got back from a uh, three day bike packing trip with four friends uh, along the ridgeway near, um, near Avebury where the stone circle is it's what was it we did? I think 135 miles over three days. Something like that. Really fun. I'm so outside of my family, my main loves are painting and bikes and bike packing specifically. Going out to do an overnight in the woods or on a campsite or on a hill with that bike and all the bags on it, or my mountain bike. And it's just the best thing ever to be sort of um, fully self-sufficient on a bike, on a long trip for multiple days with all your camping stuff and your cooking stuff I just adore it and I think about it all year all winter I'm thinking about it thinking oh when can I go bikepacking and if I had more time I would probably make a bikepacking YouTube channel and every weekend I'm out in the woods on my bike either with friends or by myself and I think a big reason that I'm painting the woods now is that I've always tried to not necessarily have a job but organise my life in such a way that 
I'm pursuing a lifestyle rather than a career. And that means choosing paths that let me do the thing I really want to do as much as possible while still hopefully having some kind of business model which means I can make money at it and keep keep pl- keep playing the game I d- I'm constantly constantly thinking about the fact that I'm going to (laughs) die at some point I don't know when that's going to be hopefully it's going to be in around 50 years but it may not be and health if you have it is such an unbelievable gift I think And I can feel this, I've always felt this thing in me like, I can feel like a ticking clock. This countdown is constantly running and it's driving me to do things that I like before I'm too old and too tired to do them anymore so I'm thinking about death all the time but I think in a positive way in a self-motivating way I'm not forcing myself to do it it just it's just na- it just naturally happens that I'm thinking I've got this long list of things that I want to do and keep doing before I kick the bucket there was I was listening to a podcast and the person being interviewed was talking about palliative care and hospices people dying of cancer and they were being asked what their biggest regrets were and see if I can remember rightly the top three one was in no particular order one was being too hard on themselves and not just shrugging off some things as oh well that's a mistake don't beat yourself up Um, another was not um, slowing down and just taking time to appreciate what was happening around them in that moment and the one that struck a chord with me the most was doing people were saying they, they wish they'd lived life more on their terms and hadn't done what either perhaps their parents or what they felt society wanted them to do or thought they should do or they thought they had to do for some reason I think about that a lot and I've never um, I've never been remotely interested in having a conventional life at all which is probably why I'm doing this right now and not sat in an office cubicle. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Some people want to do that. This sort of internal ticking clock thing I mean, I don't I actually don't think it's an exaggeration to say that it, it sort of it almost borders on panic at times. That I just I haven't I haven't done enough, or I'm not doing enough, 
and time is running out. Because when you think about it, how many good, how many good years do you have, will you have? Not how long will you live, that's a completely different thing. How many good years where you can jump out of bed, hop on a bike, ride for 50 miles, have a lovely lunch, take some photos, do some sketching, have a coffee, go home, play with your kids, have enough energy to sort of, you know, <laughs> clean your house, clean your bike, and go to bed not feeling like you're half dead. I'm not sure how many of those years you get. And I'm not sure how many of those years I have left. Hopefully loads. I do listen to a lot of podcasts and I'm I'm quite interested in sort of anti-aging episodes. Where people talk about you know breakthroughs in technology that are coming. Not just AI, but longevity stuff, which is super interesting, I think. And it makes me wonder how long would I choose to live if I could choose? I think as long as possible. As long as my family and friends were sort of <laughs> into the same idea. You might end up being Billy No Mates, as everyone you know, love and care about croaks. But I think it would be pretty incredible to watch all of the human advancements. It's just the old the old threat of nuclear war, which uh, might put a downer on things. Not something you'd want to hang around for. I, <laughs> I don't know whether this is coming, picking up on the stereo microphone, but we've got heavy traffic quarter of a mile that way down in the gorge and we've got birds beetles and bugs chirruping over here it's an interesting dynamic If I had the time, I would do a lot more hammock, hammocking. 
Um, I remember a few years ago, I got my hammock and I just came up here. And she was very close to here, and I went out to the sort of to the edge of the gorge, and I set my hammock up. I think I was quite stressed out at the time, and it was a weekday, so everyone was at work, and I just climbed in, and there was no one around, and I fell asleep, and it was amazing, and it's and you. It, <laughs> You have that weird combination of guilt. I shouldn't be here. I should be earning money. This is a waste of time. Act, act. But it was one day, and I haven't done it in years. So one day within like out of what, 700 if you say two year period. It's not much, is it, one day? And I, I, and I remember it really well. And most of your days just blend seamlessly into one another. You don't really remember anything. Which I think is such a shame. Most of your life just evaporates in a sort of Groundhog Day swirl of similarity. So I think it's valuable and important to sometimes do slightly odd things, like walk into the woods on a Tuesday, set up a hammock and fall asleep. Nothing wrong with that. Some things are more important than making a few quid that day. That point that the podcast made, the, the people in the hospice made about being too hard on yourself is, is very interesting. I think it's worth, you know, thinking about if you want to succeed in life and you've got a you've got your list of things that you're desperately trying to get through like I do it's easy to slip into not woe is me but sort of a hyper self-critical self-talk where you're berating yourself for not doing enough and at the end of the day, you're just having a go at yourself, which is really weird when you think about it. You should be making your own life better. And if you're not being, if you're not being kind and understanding even to yourself, It just doesn't make much sense, does it? Which isn't an argument for letting yourself off the hook and being lazy. That's not what I mean. But if you know you've tried hard, and you will know, because you can't lie to yourself, not really, then you'll know if you've tried really hard. And if you did, that's all you can do. <laughs> it is a real shame actually that that port way noise is there. I mean, let's be honest. It's rather abrasive. And when I made my painting film, The Woods, 
the, the proper film. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. That was... That was something I've wanted to do for ages. Not specifically in the woods. It just ended up being that because that's what I'm working on at the moment. But making a film, not just making thoughts and painting where I'm stream of consciousness chatting while I'm working, but actually make a film with a cameraman and uh, considering, you know, direct, making directorial decisions about camera angles and shots and you know DOP decisions like what lens should we use and you know I'm I'm a camera nerd as well as a paint nerd I love all that stuff I love the I love all the gear I love all the technical stuff I like the and I like the art of filmmaking and I like cinema and all that sort of stuff so making my own film I really want to this this is this isn't filmmaking this is vlogging um, so, uh, my friend Dom is a cameraman, my friend Borja is a director, and I have another friend Tom who is a colourist who does grading. So between us, they all kindly contributed their significant skill sets and helped me make this painting film here, uh, here in Lee Woods, just over, just over that way, about a quarter of a mile. And I wanted to bring the bike in, obviously you show the bike. So I'm just so obsessed with it as I keep rabbiting on about. But it's a completely different thing to pick, you know, Put a team, <laughs> put a team together, and try and actually make something. Make a piece of, make a piece of art, but with video. It was really fun. I, ha I, it took a while, but I thoroughly enjoyed the process, um, and I'm pretty happy with the result. It's not, it's not perfect, but nothing ever is. But yeah, so fun to make and to think to think about how to make it how I wanted to make it um, sort of the point the point I mean the point of it the point of it was I wanted to make a film right that's the main point but it's function if someone says so what do you do what is it you actually do instead of you know obviously I would explain it I would tell them but you can say, well, watch this video. This is what I do. I get on my bike, I ride into the woods, and I paint. And when people say, well, how, what, what's your work like? That's an incredibly difficult question to answer without getting your phone out, loading up your Instagram and going, well, these are my paintings, this is what it's like. You can't, oh, well, I, you know, I paint trees. Well, you know, lots of people paint trees. Why do my trees look different? Or whatever. So having the video to me is a really good way to answer all those sorts of questions. What do you do? Watch this video. Here's what I do. It's so much better than trying to explain it verbally. You can just see it unfold in front of your very eyes. And that video, um, I don't know if you're remotely interested in the behind the scenes aspect of it, but it was actually filmed over two days. And hopefully that's not obvious when you watch it. Because I, I shot, I'd say 80% of the footage in the film was shot in one session. And then I took it to my, to Borja, who was a director, and showed it to him. And he said, do you want me to be honest? And I said, of course. Um, 
I have a thick skin for that sort of thing. I, if someone's better than me at something, I don't want them to hold back and be nice to me. I want them to tell me exactly what's wrong, what could be improved. So he did that and I listened and I implemented every single change that he suggested and ended up with a much better film. Uh, the changes, if you care, specifically were when I looked through my hands at the start and make the that, there was no looking through the fingers shot, it was just from the side initially. So I went back and did a pickup shot of the view through my hands so the camera is seeing what I see and putting you, the viewer, into my head, which I agree with Borja was the right thing to do and I'm glad I put the extra effort in to go back because it's not, it's not, you know, it's a lot of, it is a lot of effort to do it all again. And I went back on my own the second time with my own camera, my Fuji X-T3, which is good for filming. Uh, Quality is good enough. Yeah, and we, we, I, film these pickup shots. Some of them I was holding the camera like this, painting and filming at the same time, which was very tricky. But yeah, definitely worth it, and, it, and we ended up with a better film. But interestingly, Borhard made the point that the moment you have a shot, like at the start when I'm riding towards the camera, that's that's like a drama shot. That's not a reality vlog. Oh, I don't use the word vlog. It's not, um, you know, factual documentary style, which is what it kind of should have been the whole tone of the thing. Following me. Following me doing something unscripted. That's the word, unscripted. Uh, and if you're doing that, if it's unscripted, you can't really have a camera angle that's ahead of me when I'm riding through the woods, because if it's unscripted, how does the cameraman know where I'm going to be? How can he be ahead of me if he doesn't know where I'm going to go? So as soon as you put a shot facing me, it's contrived which I never would have considered and I think is a really interesting point. Um, but as you can see, I left that shot in. <laughs> I liked it. The path was wiggly and I thought it looked cool and that was reason enough to leave it in. So yeah, sue me. If I did the film again, I probably would do it um, uncompromisingly uh, unscripted documentary style you know more like this more like thoughts on painting but uh, you know if you want to get nice shots if you want it to look a bit more cinematic You know, you need to place people in specific locations. And there was a variety, yeah, there's a variety of focal lengths. And if it was unscripted, probably we would have done one, maybe maybe 35 mil or slightly wider, stuck with one focal length for the whole thing. Instead of going for some longer lenses. But I'm a nerd, as I said, and I like I like technical stuff. I mean, really, you should have you should have the discipline to not just use something because you think the technology is cool. The art should always come first. The story should come first. But it's my video. I'll do what I want. <laughs>
this may not be sticking entirely to the reference in front of me but if there's one thing that encourages the use of artistic license it's organic subject matter Can you let me know in the comments if you like the <laughs> borderline oversharing uh, conversational style or whether you want to s me to stick more to just talking about painting stuff. Um, it's probably not a good idea that I let these videos descend into my own personal therapy sessions. But one thing I've discovered about teaching, when I teach painting to plein air painting to groups, it's only when you say something out loud that... No, I'm going to say it differently. Saying a thought out loud um, uses different neural pathways than having the thought alone and not saying it. I've noticed this and I'm fascinated by it. And what does that mean? Well, that means if you're having trouble working something out, if you speak your thoughts, whether you're on your own or in front of a class, you can you are using different circuits in the brain and i think you are employing more brain power more iq more neurological resources to flesh that idea out and resolve it and get a, a solution which is fascinating but kind of obvious and logical i think when you think about it and there's been numerous times when I've been teaching where I will be searching for words to explain a concept, a technical concept within painting. And just by the mere act of talking about it out loud, not intellectualizing it and just thinking it through, I find myself saying things I didn't even know I was going to say it until the second that I said them. It's like the thought, the solution to the problem I'm trying to um, elucidate comes as a result of talking about it, literally in the moment. And yes, that is the proper use of the word literally. Everyone under 30, take note. So, try it. I mean, I might be stating the bleeding obvious, and you know all this already, but if you're really struggling with something in your work, and you're alone in the studio, try and say what the problem is out loud, and describe it in detail, and pretend you're Pretend you're teaching yourself and you already know the answer. Pretend you're explaining the concept and the problem to a group of students. And I think you might be surprised at what comes out of your mouth without you realizing it was going to in the moment. Now, there's probably neuroscientists out there that know what this, that have a term for this already. Um, if there are any neuroscientists listening, 
please get in touch. Um, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a, a word for it. But I think it's fascinating. Yeah, teaching has been really interesting. Um, you know, on the one hand, you get to you get to meet people who love the thing you love and will tolerate you talking in depth about it to them, and they'll actually pay you for that. Whereas some of my friends and family aren't paying me and just have to listen anyway. So there's that. And yeah, what I just said, you get to, if you hadn't done the teaching, you wouldn't necessarily have come to these interesting conclusions by yourself in your own time. Now, unlike my normal work, these woods ones, they need, they need two sessions. I think they just do. Because there's the painting on white transparent part. And then there's the sort of refining part, and I don't really want to try and cram everything into this Alla Prima session. I think it will hurt the painting. I think it's actually better to be a little bit more patient, retreat to the studio, and finish plein airs off in the studio with you know a cup of coffee and more consistent lighting and just think where do I want to take this because this is a wonderful starting point but I'm not sure I want to do this is composition mark making hue colour harmony I'm not sure I want to do complete paintings outdoors in this style and there may be collective gasps from you out there in YouTube land <laughs> yeah I, d I, I don't think it's helpful to get hung up on dogma, things must be done like this or it's not plein air, you know, arguments like that. I just think that's ridiculous. Look at that. Oh, didn't wash that brush and it's solid. You know, the whole, the whole point of being an artist is, well, ultimately, for some reason, you're obsessed with freedom and creative, cre creativity and you want to just do your thing and if you're bound by your own arbitrary rule set you're not free at all you're really not so I don't have any problem with starting these outside and finishing them inside. If that's what this tells me it needs, then that's what I'm going to do.
really is quite quite dark out there when you squint I'm hoping that I can just keep doing this all year round, all through winter. Obviously, as long as, long as it's not raining. Because what changes more throughout the year than trees? Leaves fall off, leaves change colour. I'm very excited about those possibilities capturing the seasons because in winter trees get you know this is all skeletal it's all the the frames but in summer in full bloom you've got canopy color density it changes a lot So lucky to be able to be here doing this. Definitely. I feel very grateful. I'm not sure how much more I want to do on this out here to be honest No, let's keep going. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. rather apprehensive about this. Oh. Oof. Getting a titanium white out. If this, I'm just thinking, if this goes wrong, it's going to be a mess. Step back, step back. Always good to step back. Now, because it's GoPro, you obviously you can't see what I'm seeing, so should we go and have a look? So there's that foreground, there's that foreground tree. It's a lovely, it's a lovely collection of shapes. I think I, <laughs> oh, it's awful to admit, but I think I nearly take as many photos of my bike leaning against trees as I do of my own children. Not that my children lean against trees a lot, but you know what I mean. 
No, it's not as much. It's not as much. Much more photos of the kids. Yeah, if any of you are uh, keen cyclists on gravel or mountains or whatever you want, whatever you like, and you, if you are remotely interested in my outdoor life away from painting, you can follow me on Instagram at Outdoors Indulgence. That's where I post all my non-painting related outdoor adventures. Be careful, Tom. Amazing the, the different colours out here. The sort of grey blue on this one. Ah, right, okay. Another thing. I notice when I teach, some people don't fully understand how to use the Uber ruler, right? Some people are sort of just putting it like this and trying to do. Right. This, it's designed. Okay, so you hold it, thumb index finger and then your middle finger can support here now you can pull from left to right uh, from right to left right and that pulling makes this grip okay now you can rest the ferrule the metal bit of the paintbrush on the uber ruler so we're not just laying it on here although that does work to some degree but then the the brush the uh, bristles are on the Uber ruler. That's not what it's designed for. It's designed to be held like this. Yeah, so that's it really. And using it vertically, obviously the same thing. Get that bolt hooked on, grip it with your index finger and thumb, and then use your middle finger to support it. And now you can do a vertical line. Uh, like I'm just about to do now, actually. And, it, you know, you can argue that, oh, there's no real straight lines in nature and it's going to it'll make your work. Dead straight lines, you know, take uh, lack personality. Yeah, I understand all those arguments, but sometimes you just want a straight line. And if, and the tool is there if you want it. So I'm very, I'm, although I am trying to add some opaque paint now, I am feeling very hesitant. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how much more I'm going to continue with this. Probably just start another one. Because this could go horribly wrong. fact yeah I can feel it in my bones that I want I think I want to stop painting so dark under here Painting in the shade always 
creates its own unique set of issues. Getting dappled light on my painting now. Love all the little sticks and twigs and stuff you get out there. Built building an image. It's just so satisfying. There really is no substitute for plein air painting, is there? If you haven't done plein air and you do currently only paint from photos and perhaps the reason you're not or haven't tried plein air yet is maybe it's a bit, it seems a bit intimidating. Um, Maybe the woods would be a good place to start because there are so few people. And even if you do go to a, you know, a popular beauty spot, if you just walk, if you just walk off the trail for two minutes, no one will come in. It's a stray, a stray dog will and come and give you a sniff, but you're not going to get anyone peering over your shoulder. So if if that if that is something that's stopping you this and I get it trust me it's not it's not oh sun's gone it's not nice to have people leering over your shoulder saying what are you painting it's awful in fact for the most part but coming somewhere like this could be could be the answer I mean, you're, you're then faced with another sort of overwhelm, which is, oh my gosh, there is so many options in here, what am I going to do? But that's a good problem to have, and it's a better problem than someone talking at you over your shoulder, telling you that they're Uncle paints watercolour and then you have to explain that this isn't actually watercolour and on and on and on
Sun's back out. Yeah, I am I am getting perilously close to uh, overwork overworking not overwork in general overworking this piece so very soon I'm going to stop and every time I say that I keep going for another 40 minutes so we'll see I have lit I have literally ruined paintings again correct use of the word literally by not stopping in time and it, it and it can be heartbreaking especially if you've got a really nice collection of marks down somewhere and then you just can't help yourself and you come in and splodge over the top of it and that mark is gone forever and you try and recreate it and it just it doesn't work it's that thing about the contr the contrivance of deliberate intent you know think happy accidents are you can't recreate a happy accident by definition really it is what it is you got lucky well done and then painting over the top of one of those is just, it's so tragic. It really, really sucks. My beard's probably turned white since my last thoughts on painting, it's been that long. I am rapidly aging. Stress is what it is. Right, I think we're mere seconds away from stopping. Now I sort of have to sign it at this stage because this is when the paint's wet. Right. Oh! So finny. It's rather really a lot of dappled light. Where can we get it? In the shade. Right there. There's so much distortion on the GoPro. Not much paint used. Okay, let's find another spot. Okay. Back on the titanium horse. Go and look for something else. So, I've just come back to this, this amazing tree. Um, it's a bit different, isn't it, to the previous painting? It's one thing. It's not about the forest and the trunks. It's about this one individual tree and these vines that are attempting to strangle and take it over. I wonder actually if this does, this vine does damage the tree. I mean, it, 
it's got that sort of parasitic vibe but parasites don't they have to keep the host alive that's the whole point they live on something else whoops look at the roots on this thing I mean that is that is beautiful nice down there look at it all the moss like an old woman's hair not really that's a terrible analogy oh, oh. interesting Watch is this a crime scene whoever left the glasses I'm going to put them back where I found them they're here under this tree if you're wondering sun stays out for this. And here it is. Okay. The sun seems to have gone in. Not the end of the world. It will come out again. I think my style is changing. I think I used to be more obsessed, is probably the right word, <clears throat> about making things look absolutely real with the right tone, hue, all that sort of thing. Now, I'm moving away from that a little bit. I'm more interested now I think in having right this is a perfect example of me what I was talking about earlier thinking through something via talking I haven't given this in much deep thought but it does need thinking about so yeah what am I trying to do now uh, make a nice image I think make something that I find interesting and hopefully moving and the interest and emotion part trump the accurate part Is that too zoomed in? I don't care. Yeah. Is it is it interesting? Is the painting does the painting have enough going on? be you know exciting whether it looks exactly like the subject matter I'm not as concerned about these days I think that is a a natural progression for me as a painter and I'm not going to try I don't want to overanalyze it I'm perfectly comfortable with it And I think if you're not, I mean, if you're not 
changing and evolving as an artist. What are you doing? You're obviously not... Well, okay, let's not get too judgmental, but you're probably not pushing yourself very hard if your work looks exactly the same as it did 10 years ago. But maybe that's not fair, maybe... Maybe people settle into a rhythm, they're quite... Yeah, shut up, Tom. Don't overanalyze it. Paint how you paint, I don't care. There is no right. I do like making big brush strokes. My friend Borja, who uh, gave me some directing tips for the film, he's Spanish, and uh, man, the Spanish had a very good sport weekend. They won the Euros, they won the Wimbledon, I think they won golf. Uh, there's a yacht racing league called SailGP, they won that. Kind of remarkable, really. So he was very pleased. I love the way there's just this drop off behind this tree. And although this painting is not gonna communicate that drop, I can see it. I love how nature just sort of it just it 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 just does what it does. It it, it clings. It can cling to a rock face. It can grow inside a boulder. It it just wants to. It just wants to thrive in any conditions, it doesn't, there's, there's always nothing you can throw at it. It will just keep going. I tried to, when we moved to our new house that we've now been in for six years, I spent three days digging out a incredibly pesky holly bush. And um, it was very, very, very hard to get rid of. And I finally did and I've seen it coming, growing back from the same. I, I dug down and, you know, removed the stump and I did everything I thought you had to do. But, you know, life finds a way, as Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Park. <laughs> it does, it just finds a way. It, it, if you leave 1% of its DNA underground, eventually that is gonna come up somehow and it took it five or six years but it's back life just wants to live which is quite sort of poetically beautiful in a lot of ways isn't it Whether you're a person or a tree, there is an innate drive to survive. So many lovely nooks and crannies in these in these trees.
not really sure how to resolve these sort of background areas. I'm not particularly I'm not particularly interested in them. Sort of happy just to render them in wobbly chaos. I don't feel important. And you know, look, you got some nice marks there. It's not exactly what I'm seeing, but it's a nice mark. And sometimes nice marks are better than reality. Getting a bit tricky, isn't it? There we go. And it is, it is dark. <laughs> it is dark under here. I do hope you can see this. I mean, I can barely see it. It's so dark under here. Just had a strong sense then of the Instagram account I have uh, over the next week, hopefully. So, if you're interested, check there and you'll see them. They were just, I've no actually, it's not hyperbole, I haven't actually seen, I've never seen a tree like it. This specific one I'm talking about, it was just extraordinary. It looked like it had been it had barked like this, but it was the grooves with the fissures were deeper, and it looked like the tree had been pulled and twisted the whole way, uh, pulled up and twisted. It was absolutely bonkers, really impressive. I think I've seen something similar to that, but not not as extreme. I just love these little sort of these tendrils that you get.
and similar to trees. I can't tell you the names of these birds as much as I'd love to. But my lack of knowledge about them doesn't diminish the pleasure you get or I get from listening to them. Again, if you think you know, if you're listening to this and you can hear the birds and you think you know what they are, by all means, tell me in the comments. I'm all ears. having a quiet moment. Wow, it's getting really dark in here. <sighs> I 
genuinely struggling to see this. I, re I hope this is coming out on the on video. If I keep going down this forest painting path, which I fully intend to I might start putting fairies on everything. Talking about goblins. That is such a wonderful shot in Lord of the Rings, that one I mentioned earlier when the when the hobbits are on the road and they jump off. It's so it's so sort of ominous and scary. And that metal gloved hand reaches over I think it starts sniffing doesn't it the the ring wraith or the the Nazgul Nazgul I think it starts sniffing like a dog They're quite cheesy, those films, aren't they? But <laughs> they're also amazing. And The Fellowship's the best one. Feel free to argue with me in the comments about that. I just think the atmosphere's better. Especially Brie. Where do they go? Is it the Prancing Pony or something? And they meet Strider. The rainy, muddy streets of Brie. The Hobbit films were rubbish though. I'm, I wonder if some close-up of an interesting tree like this, I wonder if it could work on a large scale. really getting dark now. I'm genuinely struggling to see what I'm doing.
sort of surprised I haven't seen more mountain bikers actually. But it is Thursday afternoon. green leaves up here but I think I need to be patient and put those on when it's dry back in the studio There's actually quite a lot of mosquitoes out here. I thought they only they needed st still water to breed. Um, I guess all they need is a puddle. Let me know in the comments. Okay, sun's coming up a bit. So the vines seem to have their own bark. They have their own personality. It's not just the tree.
Okay. Getting towards a natural conclusion here. something about spidery tendrils I like <coughs> do you need a signature space Now who knows what this is going to look like when it gets brought into the light. It's a bit tricky painting in these conditions, but I like the I like the textures. So hopefully that's going to be enough to work with. really can barely see anything. <laughs> oh, it's dark. judging colour temperature when it's this dark either. Oh here comes a dog to wheel my bag. And yes that has happened before. That was in London on Hampstead Heath.
Okay, I th think there's much more we can do here without ruining it or n needlessly adding to it, I should say. Okay, let's leave it there. Very, very dark in here. I hope... I hope that makes sense as a painting. That's what we're looking at. Right then, thanks very much for watching. If you've got any opinions on anything I said, leave them down in the comments. Like, subscribe, all of that stuff. I don't know when I'll see you again. It might be in a month. It might be in two years. Nobody knows. That's the exciting thing about thoughts on painting. You never know. Thanks for watching. Bye.